52 things I've learned in 52 years. Come get ready with me while we talk more about it. This is one of the videos you commented on the most, so we're gonna dig in and talk a little bit more about each one. Number one, first impressions aren't based on looks or based on self-confidence. And you're gonna say, okay, but you're sitting there doing your makeup. But yes, it's okay, you can look great on the outside. But the truth is, especially women in midlife, having that inside confidence where you walk into that room and you just really feel it and really own it and you're not comparing yourself to people who are around you or worried that your skirt's not perfect or worried that your hair is not perfect, that inner confidence, you can feel that woman and you know those women that I'm talking about. They bring it every time. And by the way, I'm getting ready for work right now. Usually I wouldn't be putting on this much makeup, but because I'm gonna be going on camera in a few hours, that's why I'm doing it. Uh, you know, I'm, I was just thinking about this as I think about what my experiences have been with feeling that confidence or needing that confidence more than anything on the inside. I go and I speak a lot at different engagements and I don't, yeah, I go into these rooms that are like brilliant people in there and I don't always know all the things that they're doing. I'm in there to talk or introduce somebody and I've learned that I really have to like take a breath, hold it, let it out, walk up on stage and have that inner confidence. And when you feel like you're going into a room and you're not comparing yourself to somebody and you're not worried about what anybody else is thinking, you can really be in that moment. And that's made a huge difference for me, especially with being on camera because I've, I've aged over the years in front of the camera and that's that's just kind of the way it is. My arms don't look like they did when I was 25 years old. You know, my stomach doesn't look like it did when it was 25 years old. But my inner confidence, I think, is what really is what people see and what people um, find that they can relate to or feel comfortable with. And that's what I look for in another woman too. I really love to see women that are doing that because those are the women that never feel invisible no matter how old they are. Number two, the minute you see jealousy in a friend, get rid of them. This is a hard one, but it's one that I learned the hard way. I had somebody in my life who was like a sister to me, like really, really special to me when I was uh, a little bit younger and coming up in this business. And I really, I really trusted this person, but it seemed like every time I had something that was like an achievement or something exciting, or I knew I was possibly up for a new job, it would be this kind of very critical comparison, not very supportive person. And when you have that not supportive thing and you start to doubt yourself, that is a sure sign that you shouldn't be around that person. And I found myself automatically not telling her things anymore, like feeling I had to hide things. And the last thing you wanna do from a good friend who's coming to your house, inside your world, knows your business, is hide something from them. So it makes no sense. So I really had to learn how to, to separate and eventually move apart. And when you move apart from somebody that you have known for for years and you have gone through the trenches with in so many ways that's hard that's a man that's harder than a guy breakup sometimes for me it's really really difficult but um it was something i learned and something i'm aware of so if you see jealousy in somebody you know that's you're not just imagining that you know what that looks like and more importantly you know what that feels like and if you're experiencing it go with your gut on that let me know if you ever experienced something like that because I think it's common. I, I've heard from a lot of you who said you've gone through this and you're actually trying to find friends at this age. Um, but jealousy in a friend over the years is not an uncommon thing, but it's definitely something you have to be aware of and catch so you're not falling into that trap. Number three, less is more when it comes to makeup. But hold on before you write nasty comments in the bottom. I have to go to work today and I'm on camera, so I have to put more on. I'm going to show you all the pictures of all the other days where there's a whole lot less there. Um, and here's why. I feel like, this is me, the more I glop on makeup when I'm not on camera, um, the older I look. I just think it brings down my face a little bit. I think like it looks like I'm trying to cover things up. And I found other things to emphasize now as I've gotten older. So when I was, yes, these are lashes. It's not lost on me, the ironing. Um, when I was younger, I would put a lot of makeup on, put my lips on, barely, you know, and just be very, very flashy with it. And I think that now, so if I go out on a Saturday night with my husband, if I put some makeup on, I'll have a little bit of a tinted foundation that I put on. I make sure that I use my handy eyelash curler at all times. I love mascara. That's one of the big things. And I love a lip liner and a way to fill it in. I think eyes are really important as you get older to pay attention to those. But I think if you're putting too many things on your face, for every day, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me time-wise, and it doesn't make sense to me with how you look to somebody else, as if like, 
going on? Why does she have so much makeup to feel good? And so again, if you're just tuning in, I'm heading to work shortly, but I wanted to talk about that because I think that less and more is actually a, um, I think it's a skill to be able to do that. And if you have any tips on, you know, what you use, if you have your five products you go to, I'd love to hear about them because I'm trying to condense and do a little bit less as I get older. Okay, so these are five go-tos that I have with me right now when I'm not using too much. One is this Milk Foundation Stick. Even though this is not the tinted foundation, you can put a little bit on your brush and rub it all over in just areas. I get very red on my nose, and so I need to cover you know that area up or it looks like I'm cold all the time. Eyelash curler for me is essential because I can actually just pull my eyelashes out a little bit without using fake ones. A good mascara, this is a good one. It's just a Maybelline, but it's called Sky High and the brush here I like because it moves around a little bit and it's thin and I can get on the bottom lashes too. Any kind of lip liner. I've been really attracted to a lot of the drugstore products lately. Um, NYX, NYX, this, they have a big display at the drugstores and Neutrogena Hydro Boost because this is not, you know, $20 for a lip gloss. I think it's like $7 or five, I don't even know what it is but it's not one of those crazy prices. And so when I use it up, I don't feel badly. And the color I have on here, cause I don't have my glasses, ballet pink. Number four, starving yourself only causes you to overeat later. And I gotta tell you, back in my twenties, that's what I thought. I thought like, oh, if I eat less and I work out really hard, then that's how I'm gonna, you know, stay thin and lose weight. And I really had a problem with it. And I'll talk about that at another time, but I definitely know for sure nowadays, I schedule my eating. I know what I'm gonna eat, when I'm gonna eat. I intermittent fast, so I have a, a schedule of time, a, a period of time where I eat from 12 to eight every day. And that's what I do. And I'm not starving myself and I'm full and I'm not craving things that are not good for me because I think we really send a, a bad message out there uh, about food and about how to look at it and the good and the bad. And I'm grateful for the fact that we're looking at different things in our diet now. We're looking at sugar, we're looking at inflammation. It was part of the reason that I went back to school to become a, a certified wellness coach because I felt like I wanted to learn more to educate myself and to be able to talk more about it and know what food did, does for my body. So anyway, that's something that I've learned over the years for sure, changed my mindset on, and I'm so happy that uh, my mindset is like this because it makes things a lot more pleasurable too. Number five, don't let somebody isolate you and become the only person in your life. And this is, this is something that I can't actually believe I allowed to happen, but you know what? We do things sometimes that we definitely regret. This was right after my divorce, and um, I've always called this guy my Mr. Big to avoid using his name, but... <sighs> You know, I was so uh, wanting his approval because it was our second time around. I dated him before I, I uh, got married. He was like that guy that, you know, you could never get. And then he was the person that I went to after I got divorced. And I found myself with no friends. I found myself isolated in terms of always trying to like play to him and make sure he was okay with everything. If we did bring friends around, he was quiet and changed his personality. And I, I quickly, he quickly became the only voice that I heard in my ear. And that was a real problem because everything that I did was dictated by what I thought he would want. So it would just be like, what would he want? What would he think? What would he say? What would he do? And I became really a weaker version of myself and it took a while took therapy and a lot to unwind from that because I found that a lot of my decisions were based off of what his thoughts were, his life experiences were. So if you feel like you are with somebody that's isolating you or not allowing you to be around family or friends or you feel like uh, they have a problem anytime you're doing that or you're not right next to them, be aware of that. And if you see somebody that is having that experience, a friend, a loved one, a sister, aunt, brother, cousin, whatever it is, try to you know try to give them that the the heads up because sometimes when we're in that we can't see it for ourselves number six stop asking everybody else their opinion this one is um, something I learned I don't know maybe about six years ago because I felt I was feeling a little insecure and I was trying to look at start some new businesses on the side and I didn't have a lot of knowledge and I kept asking everybody what they thought Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Do you think this is a good idea? What do you think about this phrase? Is this a good title? Is this? A... And I had a thousand answers by the end of it, which is great. But the problem is, is it? 
I was out of it. Like it, it had no more of my voice in it anymore. So it's okay to ask a few select people what they think about things, but going around, my brother calls it polling. He said, you used to poll people all the time to find out what everyone's thoughts were before you made a decision. But I think confidence derives from a place where you're making decisions based on what you know in your gut is the right or wrong thing to do. You're allowed to ask a couple of people, people that might know a little bit more about something, but the truth is you don't need everyone else's opinion to get started. Or if you're asking them opinions about a relationship, you don't need everyone's opinion in that. Number seven, find somebody that you respect and you can always laugh with. And this goes a couple of different ways, in relationships and in friendships. With relationships though, I will tell you, the one thing about Ira is he always makes me laugh. Like even when I am in the worst mood and I, I want him to join in on the bad mood with me, he refuses to do that and somehow makes me laugh about things. And then my best friend is the other person. I've known her since, oh gosh, like 2004. And she's somebody I can get on the phone, have my whole list of gripes with, and then all of a sudden I come off the phone call feeling 10 times better because either she's made me laugh or she's made me laugh at myself. And that's a really nice thing to be able to do. But there's something in realizing that not everything has to be an emergency. Like we have big problems out there. We really, really do. But everything doesn't have to get us upset. And the sooner you realize that, the more you enjoy every single day. Number eight, stop bragging that you don't sleep because it's not cool. And by the way, it's also not healthy. And yes, Gen X, I came from a generation where I would brag about the fact that I had, I kind of weigh with four hours of sleep. I, you know, I got up this morning and went to the gym and I didn't sleep, I didn't sleep, I didn't sleep. I said that so many times and then I realized just how important sleep is for all sorts of things. Uh, for balance, for hormonal balance, for clarity in your brain. I mean, the list goes on. If you follow any of the sleep doctors that are online, you'll learn all about it. I'm not a doctor, but I definitely know that sleep is super, super important and I'm trying to get as much as I can not go over, I'm not trying to get 10 hours a night or make up for things, but I really focus on like seven hours of sleep to make sure that I'm feeling good the next day, I have clarity, and not bragging about the fact that I can stay awake for so long and get so much done that I'm bigger and better than everybody because that doesn't really work at the end of the day. Number nine, being clutter free in life gives you so much clarity because you're not owned by your possessions. And let me explain that. It doesn't mean you can't have stuff, but what it means is saving every little thing is not necessary. And I really learned that in terms of moving all the time. I moved from Florida to West Virginia to another place in West Virginia to Pennsylvania to Florida to Pennsylvania. So I did a bunch of moving around and I always had to kind of drill down and I was, a lot of times I would just drive to take the things with me. And I realized that when I didn't have clutter, I had clarity of mind. So even nowadays, for no particular reason. If I don't feel like I've got it together, I feel a little cloudy, I will go clean a closet, I will go clean a drawer, I will go and make sure that like I don't have too many papers, I don't have too many things that I'm collecting, even on my desktop. I think there's something really true in terms of uh, being clutter-free because clutter-free gives you clarity of mind and then you can think about what's really important. And thank you for having coffee with me. Number 10, don't dismiss the little things in your relationship because they probably won't change. I don't even know if I have to explain this one any further, but I'm going to. When I met my former husband, I dismissed a whole lot of things. I dismissed the fact that he had a terrible relationship with his other former ex-wife. Uh, I dismissed the fact that he was on somebody else's couch. I dismissed the fact that he had lost his car in his home. I dismissed the fact that he didn't have one job for a, a large amount of time. I dismissed the fact when I opened the glove compartment of a car that we later got, like 20 parking tickets fell out of it because he never bothered to pay any of them once he got the car. So uh, those were not only like pink flags, but red flags, but just real warning signs. So if you see little things that you're dismissing, Maybe it's how somebody talks to you. Maybe it's how somebody uh, physically treats you. Maybe it's how somebody, I don't know, talks to a server out in the restaurant. Don't dismiss those thinking either you're gonna change them or they're not that big a deal because I think those are the things that become a very, very big deal later on in the relationship and uh, might eventually lead to the end of it. So pay attention to those. Not every little thing that bothers you. There's some stuff that, you know, could bother you about anybody, but things that really kind of gnaw on you and you walk away thinking about maybe the next morning, pay attention to those things.
and I'd love for you to share your stories. Did you ever see what I like to call them a pink flag? Pink flags that eventually changed into red flags and then you really knew that was not the place you're supposed to be. Let me know. Number 11, don't forget to leave things that are no longer serving you. You have to make space for those other things. And sometimes it's not easy. Goodbyes are not easy. Walking away from a job that might be easy uh, to have something that's more challenging is not easy. And I've done it plenty of times. Um, I've done it from career to relationships. And I think we all have. But just kind of keep that in mind as you go forward. Because I think especially in midlife, we're looking for things that serve our purpose and serve our passion. And if you're in a job, perhaps, that you say, like, gosh, it's really easy for me to do. And I know how to do it really well. But I don't know. I just don't feel anything in my soul when I go there every single day. Think about other options out there. It doesn't mean leave tomorrow. But just think about what else you could incorporate. Because sometimes we have to leave that comfort area to get to where we really want to be. I don't know if I'm feeling purple today for work, so I think I'm going to change into pink because it's Barbie week and I've got pink on my mind and I did my pink nails too, so good start. Intermission. Um, I put this dress on, but I always have to remember to make sure I get the entire zipper because I don't know if you can see it, but the zipper goes all the way down. So last time I wore it, I'm like, it feels very airy back here. And I realized I hadn't closed this part of the zipper down here too, so just gentle reminders. Okay. Fashion problems. Number 12, sometimes it's okay to treat yourself to something new. I'm not talking about monetary things. I'm talking about celebrating your wins because every once in a while we forget to do that. We forget to say thank you to ourselves. We'd send somebody else flowers. We'd take somebody else to a lunch. We'd take somebody else to a drink, but we forget to do that for ourselves because we're always thinking, oh, I gotta do the next thing. I can't take time to stop and celebrate myself. But I'll tell you what, it's really important to do that and remember how far you've come. Dogs are always better than anything, and um, if you've been in this community for a while, you know that I sadly lost my chihuahua of 18 years back in December, the day after my birthday. It was probably one of the hardest days I have been through since the death of my mother. And um, I got Matson when he was very, very young. I'd had him all along. He moved city to city with me. He was like, he was the one constant in my life through men, through friends, through jobs, or anything. And um, you know, I, I think that he really taught me how to really love again. You know, I, I was very, I had a really hard time loving after my mother died and I was very afraid to get close and be connected. And that dog, never saying a word his whole life, <laughs> uh, somehow knew how to communicate with me. And so that's what I always say. Dogs are everything to me. I love them. I watch videos of them. I think about him all the time. And um, you know, he helped me not feel lonely so many, many times. So whether it's a dog or you have a cat or you have another kind of a pet, um, don't take for granted those days. Like they're always gonna be there. They're always gonna be at home when you get home. Uh, they'll always be there to hop in bed because they'll get older and some things they won't be able to do anymore. And so um, I'm so appreciative that I spent as much time as I could with him. 18 years old is amazing. And uh, you know, I, I hope that I never took any day for granted. Thanks so much for joining me today. So this is part one. We'll be doing a whole lot more of these, but be sure to subscribe, hit that notifications button. Let me see. Oh, you can sign up for my email for more advice and information so you don't miss anything. And I'll see you next time.